On the subject of Zoomer-only e-celebs, apparently another Minecraft streamer got exposed for grooming or essay. Someone called George, I believe. It figure everything you said in the Dream Discourse would just be repeated, though, so maybe nothing to add. I don't actually remember anything that Dream has done because the overwhelming impression that I have of him is just that one video of him doing the musical performance and doing the kissy face on the TikTok or whatever. Uh, which is so creepy that, like, it's a greater crime than any actual sexual abuse he may or may not have committed. I don't even know. What what happened? George. Uh, George Not Found? Is that the one? George Not Found responded to the allegations. Okay, the accusation is that he sexually assaulted a woman that he got drunk, or woman, an 18-year-old, in a hotel room. Dream was allegedly there... As it has been said, his best friend was in the room and Dream talked about having an 18-year-old in a hotel room at VidCon months ago. And then another person is saying, none of that is true. Okay, I don't even know. What's, what, what's, what's the anything here? Here, Dexerto, a bastion of good journalism, okay? Responds after being accused of sexual assault. Twitch streamer Kate Ibugs alleged in her broadcast she had been sexually assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator at the beginning of summer 2023. The streamer didn't directly name her abuser initially, however, claimed she was inappropriately touched while intoxicated by a creator eight years older than her. Kata Bugs explained her abuser disguised their non-consensual touching where he slipped his hand under her clothes by asking if she was ticklish. Fans quickly began pointing at George- why is it always something like this? At George Not Found, who Twitch streamer and model Navaru explained, is known for having a weird tickling kink. Okay. Well, I'm in a good position to judge this. I mean, I have no odd kinks. All right. Um, okay. So this is meant to substantiate the claim that George not found pictured here. Ooh, that's a lot of comments. 31 million views. Who boy. Uh, that George not found would do some kind of weird pseudo touch tickling thing, whatever. Guys love doing that, man. Guys love to like... You know the meme where it's like, oh, do a big yawn and then let your arms down and the girl who's next to you, you like accidentally touch her on the shoulder. What is, what's with all this beta shit? It's so weird, you know? If you, if you like a girl and you want to touch her, there are like really easy ways, like very clear pathways to that, you know? Uh, like, like it's, it's like, like very straightforward, you know, you don't have to be a weirdo. It doesn't have to be like a trick. Yeah, the secret is to go up to her and go, where's my hug? Where's my hug? Hey, where's my hug? And that, that's actually how you, you know, all, all contact with, um, women should be initiated in that fashion, yeah. Classic move, you know, one of the greats, really. It's linked with being ironic all the time. You can't do a genuine gesture. You have to disguise it as something else. Yeah, exactly. All the time, right? I don't understand, like, if anything, you'd think, like, the alpha male move or whatever would be to, like, be next to a, uh, I, like, you can just ask, like, hey, you know, mind if I, like, cozy on into you, or whatever, however you want to phrase it, you little Riz Lords, you little, you little devils, you, uh, sure, but I feel like oftentimes the social cues for the acceptability of physical contact are pretty obviously indicated if you just sit next to a person for a while, right? Like, girls aren't, different creatures if you sit next to a girl and she likes you it's usually pretty obvious just from how she like places her legs whether or not she's okay with touching you you know i don't i don't know I, it, look if you're in doubt just ask look whatever anyway let's let's learn about the tickle strat maybe this is the the new meta right like we have the where's my hug um and now and now we got the 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 tickle meta you know say whatever you want but you and i both know you have some weird tickling kink which is way too specific for someone to lie about it was a little after that when I resorted to playing games on my phone. When it happened, out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. All right, lads. Uh, if you slip your hand under the clothes of a woman without asking beforehand, don't do this. And then you ask her if she's ticklish, and she, she, sa she says no while still looking at her phone. Now you're getting like a double no. Right? Like, this is actually multiple compounding no's. The no is not just to the question of whether she's ticklish. It's a no kind of broadly. It's a, it's a general no. 
Where's the full text on this? The, the full, can somebody find this for me? I assume this text is pulled from the person who's alleging sexual assault, but I don't know where it is. Can somebody find it while I look through this? I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people, the fact that everyone else was sitting around watching us, including my best friend. Oh yeah, if you're gonna make moves on a chick, probably don't do it when everyone's staring at her, right? Like, that's, th there's a very specific vibe to that one, okay? The vibe to that one is, uh, you're all like close friends and you've gotten plastered at your favorite bar and you've stumbled your way back home and you're all being giggly and physically affectionate with each other. That's the vibe there. This isn't that vibe. That's a different vibe, you know? Uh, this vibe is not good. I'm my best friend and that his hand was in inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. Ugh. I was scared and I felt... Yeah, can I get the full text on that? Why don't you actually go and look for it? I know you're all waiting for someone else to find it. Except for you, Annie. Thank you. No, no, no. This is, uh, this is for Dream Was Taken. No, sorry. Different one. False, false, false flag. Annie said wrong tweet. Too late. Trust irrevocably destroyed. Women need to be more comfortable punching someone in the face. Yeah, but I understand the context, right? Like, if she's surrounded by a bunch of super popular YouTubers, she would worry about, like, Oh, yeah, this bitch just flipped out and punched one of us, you know, or something like that. Okay, here we go. Okay, it's been found. It's been found. It's been found, I think. I have to assume it's been found. If not this, then what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, there we go. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Okay, let, let me, uh, let me make sure this does, in fact, contain the text. This doesn't contain that text. Never mind. So this is the thing, but this doesn't contain the text that we just read. We, the, the thing we just looked at was from a notes app, I assume. That's what it looks like to me, at least. I couldn't find it. Okay. Uh, huh. Then what is this from? I just want to know what this is from. Her video, she said that exact thing. So you're saying that somebody transcribed. Oh, then maybe Novaru right here transcribed that content from the stream. And she said this in the stream. And this was just, this was just it being written down. This is a transcription, I recognize it. Okay, okay, okay. So Novaru then, or somebody else, transcribed this from the stream that the lady did before she directly said it was George Not Found. And this was afterwards, just yesterday, where she dumped all of this in response to people interpreting her allegations as against George Not Found. Okay, so now, now we have the timeline. All right. So Katie Bugs alleged on stream vaguely something that everyone then identified as being because of George Not Found. This described uh, the content of that stream. George Not Found responded on March 9th to the allegations that he was the person being named by uh, uh, the uh, uh, Katie Bugs. Katie Bugs, yeah. And then just yesterday she dropped all of this. Okay, we're we're all caught up now. Why are we going over this? Because this is politics, Ivory Knight. All right, we're, we're, we're caught up now. Nice. And this article was published and updated today. So this is the most recent bit of information. And now we know. I want to start this by saying I wouldn't be here without Shelby. I was ready to disappear with this secret forever. I never knew that creators were allowed to talk about these kinds of things. And I guess I'm still new to it all. I just didn't feel brave enough, and I still don't, but her strength made me feel like it may be okay. <sighs> a little while ago, my story had almost been leaked without me knowing, so here it is on my terms. Here is my story. Last year, at the beginning of summer, I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. I was freshly 18 and had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. Yep. I remember a moment around October where I made a comment about a certain group abusing power over minors in their DMs, saying they had minors in their DMs. It was an absent-minded comment, and I apologized for it, of course. It was a possible subconscious jab out of my own personal resentment. My comments filled with people saying that I didn't care about grooming victims and that I thought assault was a joke. And I remember sitting there, reading the comments, scrolling over and over again, heart beating faster. 
All right, I have a feeling that the entire context of what she's saying here would involve us looking at like a solid hour of it being weepily explained, which is probably not the best way to go through this. Okay, so this is the post she made after this video, and this is the post he made this morning apologizing. Oh, he made a post this morning? Since reading Katie's newest post, my perspective on that night and my overall conclusion has massively changed as she introduced new information that I was not made aware of before. I have much more, uh, I will say for now, Katie, I am sorry. I'm so sorry. I really hope that you can hear my words. Try to understand. Do not have any bad intentions. This does not change the fact that you were hurt. I'll be saying more soon. Okay. We're sort of like mementoing our way through this. Uh, you know, like re re reverse order. Probably low hanging fruit, right? Okay. So there's this. And this is linked to from this article. Katie Bugs confirms assault from George not found. Uh, and then Katie Bugs said this, and this was on March 10th. For whatever you can find, I also screen record everything. Okay, gotcha. He did a damn stream. This comes just like a week or two after the Wilbur suit allegations, another streamer in the same circle. People believe this adds credence to the allegations against George. Well, I've said before, like, Grooming in these spaces seems pretty common because, like, it's the same with the Smash community, right? If you have a community where uh, a massive audience of largely young people it, it loves and adores a small community of ultra-popular streamers or, you know, whatever else, it, uh, you know, I feel like it, um, you, you're sort of like, you're creating conditions that n normalize or at the very least, enable that kind of stuff. Man, there's a lot in this article. Holy shit. Katie Bugs hits back at the George Not Found response. Okay, so that's where we are, all right? So the overall series of events, pardon me for like piecing this together because I kind of jumped in at the middle here, okay? Katie Bugs did a stream where she made vague allegations uh, about having been assaulted that people immediately pinned to George Not Found. George Not Found uh, uh, said that he would do a serious stream later and, you know, uh, in engage with that. Um, and Katie Bugs responded to that statement by saying, yeah, say whatever you want. I got your ass, bitch. With this. And then George Not Found did the live stream response. And then in response to the live stream response, Katie Bugs did all of this, which is the main thing I assume that we have to go through. And this was only about 20 hours ago. In response to all of this, George Not Found said, I didn't realize my bad, or something like that. All these people are friends with Dream, by the way. Well, that's because Dream is like the master groomer, right? I don't even remember how much grooming he's actually done. He just emanates a powerful groom aura. How does this matter? What do you mean? Yeah, the, gro the groom signal. <laughs> Did you even watch the Dream response video he made last December? I saw a few clips of it, but I find him kind of insufferable, so no. All right, so now we know where we are. For now, this is what I have to say. He admitted to touching me that I was drunk, that I verbally didn't consent. In my mind, the conversation is over. He said silence does not equal consent, yet. He never got verbal confirmation from me. Wait, how much did he deny in his video response? Oh God, are we doing that? I guess so. Uh, hey man, look, in terms of the content of these streams, it's either this or let's spend eight more hours dooming over the fate of the Palestinian people, okay? Right, stream will start soon, da da da. Oh, thank God, it's not as long as it seemed to be. Okay, we can cut like eight minutes out of it. Thank Christ. ...involving me about and to chat. Did you do Cena yet? No, no, we'll do Cena after. More Doom, please? I'll consider it. All right, hey guys. I want to start off this stream by saying that this stream is completely demonetized. Uh -huh. I've turned off ads. I've turned off donations. Okay. However, I cannot turn off subs. Okay. But, uh... 1.25 speed. Regardless, any sub money that is generated during the stream, I will donate to charity. In the stream, I'm going to be talking about some very serious topics, including assault, abuse, and things of sexual nature. So if any of these are triggering topics for you, please sexual assault. So in this stream, I'm going to be addressing it. I was originally planning on doing this all live. Um, that's not live. And that's why I originally tweeted saying that I would be live the day that it happened. But I simply did not feel comfortable doing it live and needed to make sure that I had all the details in place and uh, just wanted to make sure it was all perfect as it happened. So today I sat down, 
talk straight into this camera. Started off by saying I did not want to it. For what it's worth, by the way, I, I, you, you should always listen to things that both parties have to say, right? Like, him being a Minecraft YouTuber is a pretty strong immediate strike against him in the grand, like, moral scale. You know, weigh, weighing, weighing his heart against a feather, the fact that he is a Minecraft YouTuber, you know, definitely doesn't serve to his benefit. It's a damning piece of evidence, exactly. But at the same time, it's generally a good idea to listen to both sides first. Sometimes things are incredibly obvious, but... Him saying my bad after she gave oodles of evidence. Nicola, we haven't seen any evidence yet, is the thing. We assume there's evidence, to be sure, but we haven't seen any yet. Thoughts, and then essentially just edited out the blank spaces where I was sitting here thinking about what to say. And then also added some screenshots for context. And I'm going to be playing that video now. Uh, I'm going to be telling the whole story, so it might not seem like everything is completely relevant, but I do need to tell the whole story for it to make sense and to fully inform you guys. Okay. So please watch the video in its entirety before forming opinions, as this is very important. Okay. Finally, before I play the video, do not send hate to Katie. That is not the goal of this, and I do not want you guys doing that. So, let's play the video. See you later, guys. Okay. Okay, so this is my side of the story of the two times that I have interacted with Katie Bugs in real life. Why is the so, audio different? The first time that I met her, it was in Dream's hotel room at VidCon. To give context about Dream's hotel room, essentially, it was a bigger room than average. It's not just a bed in a room. Like Dream's hotel room. Uh, never a more cursed place have I imagined. Good lord. Oh my god, I just lost our place while trying to hit the play button. God f damn it. Oh my god. Okay. Vaguely here. Hang out with them. And the reason is because at the time he was wearing his dream mask a lot. And he felt uncomfortable wearing it because it's just the whole mask on your face. So he just didn't want to go to the party particularly. He even suggested that they shouldn't come because he was he was assuming that they were they were having more fun where they were. They reassured him that that wasn't the case. They were bored and they wanted to they wanted to come. So now these five people um are trying to come to the hotel. But the problem with that is to get into the hotel, you need to have a VidCon creator badge. And only two of the people in the group chat actually had this badge. That was Katie and her best friend. So eventually what happened is Katie and two of her other friends came to Dream's hotel room. This was my first time actually meeting them in real life. I didn't even know who they were before meeting them. And then we essentially just were playing drinking games in the hotel room. We were just having fun, talking with each other. Nothing crazy in particular. Now, one thing Katie said retrospectively, looking back at the scenario, is that I was flirting with her throughout the night and that she was uncomfortable with this because of our age difference. At the time, she was 18 and I was 26. She actually assumed I didn't know her age because she had never said it. But then later, I had actually DM'd her on Instagram. And because of this, she says that it is confirmed that I know her age. To give some context to this scenario and to why I didn't know her age, my perspective of things is that I am with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where we are doing things that people that are over the age of 21 are doing, like drinking. And also the people that came, came from an event where they had very heavy security. This was an official VidCon after party. And with previous VidCon after parties, I even had problems getting into these events. There was one time where they didn't let me in because they couldn't confirm the legitimacy of my UK ID. They said they weren't trained to look at foreign IDs. So they didn't even let me in despite me being 26 at the time. And also since Katie's stream, I've gone back and reviewed texts from the time. And there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband on one of their one of their one of their wrists. So from my perspective, it's a bunch of 21 plus year olds hanging out. And I have no reason to think otherwise, other than her Instagram bio. But I just didn't see it. Then, Unless contradicted, this seems plausible enough. Uh, obviously, it could be not true. But if 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 it's like the host of or like the byproduct of an official after party where it's just assumed everyone's 21. Like, yeah, I mean, I, th that seems like a mistake that somebody could conceivably make. Um, so I, I'd like probably not good to fixate on that uh, unless there's some more evidence to the point. He's still justifying sexual assault. No, hold, 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 hold down, hold down, hold on. OK, all I'm all, all I'm saying is that, like, if if given all that being true and that free, like, sure, like, that's not really the issue. The, the sexual assault thing would be the issue, right? Anyway, nothing actually particularly happened. How would the age be relevant? Um, oh my god, age gap discourse. I, I think that, like, if I was partying, I would not want to be anywhere near an 18-year-old. You are a baby. It, like, if I, if I thought everyone around me was 21 or older, because the difference between an 18 and 21-year-old is pretty 
big, you know? Like, much in the same way that there's a huge difference between a 15 and an 18-year-old. There's a huge difference between an 18 and 21-year-old. And, um, like, I would not want to be partying around an 18-year-old, even regardless of any, like, legality of drinking shit. So, it, the, I guess, knowledge of her being 18, or worse, the predatory intention of being around 18-year-olds, like, specifically, that would be, I think, pretty condemnable. But again, this isn't, like, the issue that's being focused on, right? It's the sexual assault thing. And at this first night that we were hanging out, everything was very friendly. We went our separate ways, and that's the end of the first night. Then the second time that we hung out was the next night after this. So we wake up the next day, we do VidCon stuff. After we're done, that's the final day of VidCon. So VidCon is now technically over, but we have one more night in the hotel before we need to leave the next morning. And actually at this point, I actually had a friend that I had only known online meet up with me for the first time. And the whole time I'd known him, he lived in a different country. He was actually living in Japan. And I had told him I was going to VidCon, and he actually just happened to be in California at the same date. So the dates aligned. And we made plans to meet up. Now, he arrived early evening. I think it was around 5, 6 p.m. We were just hanging out in my room. Dream messaged me. I'm bored. Can you come to my room? Let's hang out, essentially. That's what we did. Me and my friend that I just met <laughs> physically. I mean, I knew him online. Went up to Dream's room, and we were hanging out. And again, the same scenario happens from the night before. They are trying to get him to go out to another party that they were at. And same story. Dream didn't want to go, but was open to them coming here. And again, that is what happened. But this time, is this really how their you people were talk? All able to get in. I don't know how they did it, but Katie, her best friend, and three other of her friends ended up coming to the room, which had me, Dream, and my online friend that I just met. So eight people total in this room at this point. This night was very similar to the one before. We were just hanging out, playing games, drinking, and just having a good time. So something I actually want to point out before I continue with the rest of the story is the way that she phrases some things in her story. Instead of saying that her and the rest of her friends actually wanted to come to the hotel to hang out with us, she said that one friend was invited by Dream, but she didn't want to go alone. So then they decided to go along with her because they were willing to go anywhere. I just think it's important to note already that the story is slightly different from the reality of it. And I'll be mentioning this a few more times throughout the rest of the story. You can see in these screenshots from the text at the time that they were all trying to come to the hotel and it wasn't just a, oh, we're willing to follow her, essentially. They were all in the group chat and part of the discussion to go to the hotel. I also chose to mention my online friend. It doesn't really add to the story, but she never mentioned him or the eighth person that she brought with. So I'm just saying it because that's how it happened. And I want to make sure the story is straight. Another thing that she talks about is how we insisted that she drinks more and that we insisted on playing drinking games when this isn't the case. Again, they had already been drinking at this party before they arrived to the hotel room. And they had also being the ones that were asking to play the drinking games. So instead of us insisting that we play it, they were actually the ones that were asking us. And if we're going to dispute this, it'll be when we look at the response that Katie gives after this, right? Like, we can't really contest it. We're just listening to his side of the story. You can see that in the screenshots here. They had actually texted multiple times, specifically wanting to play this drinking game that we had played the night before. And at this point, I was pretty drunk. And so I, I was can't basically read that quickly. You can see that in the screenshots here. They had actually texted multiple times, specifically wanting to play this drinking game that we had played the night before. And at this point, I was pretty drunk, and so was basically everyone in this room. It was the last night of VidCon. VidCon's a pretty stressful time, and honestly, a lot of people are happy when it's over. Not that they didn't like it, but uh, it's just a stressful event. There's a lot that you have to do, and when it's over, you just, you're just happy and you want to celebrate. So at this point, we then moved to the cafe. Not gonna lie, drinking games often involve peer pressure, lol. I, um, I, I like, yeah, this is, this is me, do, like, repping my autism flag. I have never accepted once a drinking game ever i'm so resistant to peer pressure that i like by default opt out i get drunk pretty much every time i start drinking anyway so it's not like it keeps me sober but i uh you know the um i'm, I'm not letting anyone else tell me when to drink no siri he started off by saying she expressed discomfort with his perceived flirting at the start i don't know how you can come back for that well i i don't think he's gotten to the point in time where that incident happened right or, or was he describing the first night in addition to the second? I don't know. I mean, we'll we'll see, and then we'll go over her thing. Apparently, her response was pretty convincing. No, that wasn't the first night. Oh, okay. I want. He didn't really explain anything about that either. Like, if a, if if a girl said to me that I was being inappropriately flirtatious with her and I disagreed, I would probably want to like explain my behavior, right? Like, I would say, oh yeah, you know, uh, we met. And uh, I, I was trying to be, I was jovial, so I like gave her a big pat in the back, and maybe she thought that I was trying to like put the hand on the small of her back, but so like I would try to like work that out, I guess. He just kind of like went right over it, you know? Couch, there was a couch in the room, and I sit next to Katie. She also says, looking back on the scenario, that she confused her nerves for excitement when I sit next to her. But again, at this moment in time, everything was friendly, nothing sexual had happened. I'm just literally sitting next to her on the couch. And during this, she was laughing, smiling. She gave no indication that 
she was uncomfortable with me sitting this close to her. She also mentions that she was thinking about my age and that I was a lot older than her. Again, she was 18 and I was 26 at the time. And again, to clarify, I actually didn't know how old she was, despite her claiming that I did, just because it was in her bio. And it was clear to anyone there that she was not uncomfortable with me sitting next to her. Then eventually, two of the people that came to the hotel room left. So then it was just down to me, Dream, my online friend, Katie, Katie's best friend, and a sixth mutual friend. Next, she says, this is a quote, resorted to playing games on her phone to avoid the awkward situation. Now, I just don't see how this is the case. She's implying that she is using her phone to essentially escape you know, and such an awkward scenario that she's in. But that that's just not how it happened. And this is why. She brought up the phone game as kind of a point. The the game was honestly the central point of the interaction at this part of the night. It was a very social thing. You know, she was showing, she was moving the passing the phone around. We were all playing the game and bantering about it. Just Are you all like six year olds? She's playing a a phone game. Like a sliding puzzle tie and you're all like, whoa, what? I can't imagine what a phone game would have to be like to attract an instant of my attention from someone else. No, it's like a group game. Like a like she she opened up like a multiplayer phone game, but it's multiplayer like for everyone there. There are social phone games. I wouldn't know. I'm not a Gen Xer, okay? Jackpot party. You're all embarrassing me right now. Having fun with the game. So I, I don't see how like she resorted to it and was like using it in that context. She wasn't being awkward at all. There was no sense of uncomfortability from her. She was laughing and playing with everyone. And yeah, I'm just, I'm not really sure why she phrased it like this. We actually continue to send each other high score updates even weeks after the event. Oh, wait, it's not a party game. It's, it's, it's just a little boing. It's, just, it's a little infinite runner game. That's not a party game. That shit. Dude, if, if I was, if I was at like, if I was partying with some people and one of the girls there pulled up this, like some mobile ad ass game, you know, I would not interpret that positively with regards to her interest in the situation, you know? Add further context to this moment. We were all actually sitting on the couch. That was This is actually more effective than a driver's license at verifying age. <laughs> in the hotel room, playing this game on her phone. And during this, me and Katie were at the far end of the couch and we were cuddling together. We had been cuddling for, I'd say around an hour at this point, playing okay. the game, talking, and just having fun. And for clarity, I had my hand around her waist above her clothes. So with her statement where she's saying that she's resorting to playing games on her phone, I just don't really understand it. And I think that the picture that she's painting is really dark, when in reality, she seemed very happy with the situation, was having a good time. I also want to address a fact that she claimed that would confirm that I know her age. She said that she had answered a question about her age during a drinking game and we were talking about sex and that she admitted to everyone in the room that she was 18 and a virgin at the time. I just don't re remember this happening. I'm not saying this to just pretend like it didn't happen. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I did not hear it happen. We're not just all sitting down and not moving. It's a, you know, it's Dog, if I was at a party and I was drunk and people were doing some truth or dare sex game bullshit and someone there said, yeah, I'm 18 and a virgin. Well, <laughs> It's been fun, everybody. <laughs> yeah, fun. Good, good, but yeah, either I'm leaving or she, I'm eating that bitch out the window into an Uber that I called. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Kerhyuk. It's a chaotic environment. I could have been getting a drink. I could have been talking to someone else. I just did not know that that was said. Another quote from her stream I want to address. She says, there was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games. I'm an 18 year old virgin, what's the issue? Yeah, don't go to any like big parties full of YouTubers and creators of, that are all older and drinking. Just don't do that. <laughs> okay, wait, Vermin's message here. She said from the beginning and twice that she was uncomfortable with something about his behavior and tried to avoid him by playing Flappy Birds. <laughs> yeah, basically. Vashi, this dude is turbo autism or is a predator? I mean, it's Minecraft YouTube. It could be both. Let's not discount both. Um, they had already been drinking before they arrived. They were drunk. And the way this is phrased, it makes us out to look like we're kind of preying on them and like forcing them to drink when they didn't want to, when that's not the case. And as I mentioned earlier, they were even the ones asking to play the drinking games via the texts before they had even arrived. So then this is when her most important yeah this dude sounds really creepy from his explanation okay I, again i want to be clear okay as somebody who has to deal with people saying a lot of dumb shit about him i do think you should always hear both sides and i do think that 
it is always good to be relatively charitable in the sense that some questions are unanswerable, like it literally does become a perspective thing. And if that's the case, it's good to at least, you know, hedge your bets a bit. There are some things that he's saying here, however, that do give me like that vibe, I guess, that feeling. Isn't he just too tone deaf? A little bit is the tone deafness. Yeah, that to me is the big thing. The big, the first big one is him saying that they were flirty or like saying that she said that he was flirting on her or but not explaining why she might have felt that way him not explaining what led to them cuddling uh i don't know there's maybe it's just like what information gets presented and what isn't I, i'm not sure you know it could be kind of like uh just a an awareness thing i'm not sure but we'll, we'll finish this then we'll see what she said cuz her big messages blew up so that's the thing that made him like apologize claim happens i'm just gonna read the quote she says out of nowhere i felt him slip his hand under my clothes sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone there we go that's so that's from her stream that's the transcript we saw okay he disguised it with a simple are you ticklish i coughed out a no and still staring at my phone i was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people the fact that everyone else was sitting around us watching us including my best friend and that his hand was inching further to places i hadn't asked it to be again as i mentioned before we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality we'd been cuddling- Under her shirt? That is slipping your hand under the clothing. That is that. Remem remember my, my, my kings in chat, okay? One of the best ways to prevent situations like this and alleviate any anxiety you might have that other people are uncomfortable with your behavior is give people plenty of outs. For example, sometimes when I don't know a chick that well, but I feel like she's kind of into me, you know, like maybe we're at some event or something and we're like sitting next to each other, you know, like there's kind of a vibe, but nothing's really been confirmed. It's okay to distance yourself a little bit just to see how she acts or, 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 or acts afterwards, right? Like, you know, get up, take a giant piss and then come back and sit a little farther from her. And if she likes you, she'll close the distance. Easy right? Like, don't indicate discomfort or, like, do some weird shit test or whatever. Just, like, yeah, it's, like, if you're ever unsure, give them the space to show you. Does that make sense? Yeah, something like that, you know? Just a little, there's always a way to incorporate that. ...for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. It was also around half an hour until I started moving my hand further up, and the way it's phrased just makes it seem like it happened pretty instantly and pretty quickly. There was nothing quick about it, it was very slow, and I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. Okay. This, okay, this might be a perspective thing, but look, in any kind of communication, there's always going to be ambiguity. We can't read minds. It's always good to be careful and like sure of what other people want. But the environment here is you're all at like a party together and you're kind of drunk. You're not asking her, hey, can I put my hand up, right? Like, he didn't ask her that. So instead, it probably felt to her like she's slowly worming her, like he's slowly worming his hand up the whole way. I think a slow advance, in a way, is actually a bit creepier. I think, in my opinion, like, if you're making moves on someone, it's better to just say, like, hey, you know, uh, you, I, anything I say here, like, uh, yeah, say this to a girl at a party, it's always going to come across weird or whatever because it's out of context. You say, like, hey, you feeling handsy? Or, hey, mind if I put my hand up? Or, like, hey, da-da-da. Whatever you want to say to, like, indicate some interest in, like, moving in with your hand and how far up it is a shirt. I think it's just better to just do it in one go. Like, communicate, do it in one go, right? You know what I mean? Like, because if you're just worming your way up, it feels like you're just begging them to say no, but making it hard for them to say no. Yeah, a frog boiling in water approach. If that makes any sense. Like, eventually your hand is kind of on her tit, but at no point did you give her a direct, uh, like, any direct indicator of your intention or the, the ability to just say, like, oh, no, I don't want that actually, you know? You can just ask, is what I'm saying. Like, you know what? It's not easy to think of the, the, the big riz in the heat of the moment. Give yourself a minute, okay? You're sitting next to the chick. You've got your arm uh, on her waist. And you're thinking, man, I want to touch your big, giant milkers, okay? But 
you can't just say, can I touch your big milkers, unless she's really cool. You have to think of a better way of saying it. So workshop it a bit in your head and then ask. It's okay to be direct. Better to be awkward than a rapist. That is true. That is true. That is true. He's treating her like a nervous animal at the vet. I think that's the thing, right? That oftentimes people treat women as flighty animals where their consent is something that's assumed but goes away if you spook them as opposed to other active participants who should be indicating interest just as much as you, right? Like, you're not trying to, like, you're not like a trapper who's trying to, you know, like, sneak up on the consent and capture it by not letting your intentions, uh, you know, sort of uh, giving them away. Um, you both, you know, equal participation. Okay, anyway, we're kind of, yeah, here. Me and Katie were very touchy, very cuddly, and very slowly got more intimate. I've always been overly cautious with consent, and this is not just because I'm a creator. I've been like this since before I was a creator, and I think that's just the way I am and just the way it should be. Nothing came out of nowhere. Everything progressed very slowly. See, look. Night. And also, before I continue... He's defining being cautious about consent by being slow. Like, yeah, I moved really slowly. But that's not what consent is. You're not trying to, like jump scare her right the consent would be like you got your hand in her waist and you know you could say like ah hey you feel real nice mind if i get a little cozy here and then you could just sort of like rope her in you know you could give her the old lasso you know the old razzle dazzle as women love to be razzle dazzled but you have to ask yeah you all get the point i want to make it clear that the furthest anything ever got was under the shirt touching and cuddling now obviously people don't typically ask if everything is okay like even such as tits? touching someone's waist on that shirt isn't that what it. first base is but in this case i was extremely slow and she was engaging with me the entire time laughing cuddling with me and even playfully fighting me for the game that we were playing again the quote that she said he disguised it with a simple are you ticklish i coughed out a no she's implying that i'm it's with malicious intent and that she coughed out a no would also imply that I should be able to tell that she was uncomfortable with it. She says, later, he made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the game I was playing. Now, I actually remember this quite vividly. I remember she was playing the game and there were parts where it would be very easy to lose if you were distracted. And she's right. I did do that. There were points where she was playing the game and she was at a point where it was easy for her to mess up. And I would, for example, tickle her or like squeeze her. And when I did this, she would laugh. She would turn around and smile at me or she would play fight with me because I just made her lose the game. She also says how, quote, I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. Now to reiterate, any time that I did this, it was met with her either smiling, laughing, play fighting with me. And there was no reason for me to believe that she was uncomfortable with it. She was not not moving. She was not not speaking. Of course, I don't believe. It feels there are so many compounding elements here, right? It feels like obviously she should have been more direct, Um, you know, being super still like, you know, he shouldn't treat her like a prey animal who needs to be snuck up on, and she shouldn't act like a prey animal, being quiet and hoping she doesn't go notice, so she goes in invisible. Uh, you know, totally weird dynamic all around. However, uh, you know, as the person making the action, him, he's the one with his hand up her shirt, right? Like, he's the one initiating the engagement. It is on him to make sure that she's okay with it leaving aside all the other power differential stuff like her being 18 him being a massive content creator so on and so forth right like if if it was a perfectly neutral engagement where neither of them was like initiating anything but they were just in each other's presence i don't think it would really implicate him i would just say like okay they're both being kind of autistic or whatever but because he's the one engaging in the behavior you know like doing the thing you know that silence is consent. I just want to make sure that it is abundantly clear. She was visibly and physically responding well to everything that we were doing. And I also want to comment on how she said- Well, wait, that's still silence though, right? Like the, the assertion she was physically responding well to what I was doing is still silent. Like that's the reason why you want to confirm it out loud because sometimes body signals can be ambiguous said that she had to stand up after many minutes for, for it to stop. She did get up multiple times throughout the night, for example, to go to the bathroom, to get a drink. Also, when her friends left, she got up to say goodbye to them, and she would come back to the same scenario. I also just want to point out that her best friend was here during this whole process, then afterwards did leave. And I think it is important to note that she made the choice to stay behind for many hours more. And as I mentioned before, she did get up, say goodbye to them, and came back. 
we were even talking about staying up to wait until 11 a.m which was the checkout time of the hotel since it was the final day we were like oh i don't know if we want to go to sleep for a few hours might as well just stay up but that's not what ended up happening and it's at this time that katie says that this is a quote i went to leave and the older guy then decided to leave too this is phrased in a way that makes me look kind of creepy to be honest she's basically saying she left so i decided to leave too which is not the case what actually happened is dream had decided he was too tired and was going to bed so the night was over and we all left she then goes on to tell a story about the elevator and how I joked about it being broken to try to get her to go in with me. So Katie actually had her own hotel room on the same floor as Dream. So she actually didn't have to take the elevator. She walked me to the elevator when she didn't have to and said goodnight to me, which was nice of her. I did joke with her about coming in the elevator by pretending that it was broken. I would essentially, I went into the elevator, the doors closed, and I would press the doors open button to make it open again. I did this a few times. And I am so curious to see what her response to this is going to be. And... She didn't go along with it, which I respectfully took, obviously, and ended up just going down to my room. So yeah, she she didn't have to take the elevator, yet she chose to walk with me to the elevator to say goodnight to me, which I think is interesting given how she's saying how she was so upset with it. But also I think these comments are her looking back on the night and not her actual feelings at the time. And that's essentially the end of the story. This is actually the last time I've seen her in person was just as those elevator doors closed. We messaged for a bit after uh, through Instagram DMs and Snapchat and our, the way that we talked to each other was always pretty ban banterous for example after the first night that we hung out but before the second she'd actually texted me and said you better not be in dream's room tonight or i'm going to shoot your leg obviously she's not going to shoot my leg it's just we're just messing with each other and i'd actually responded to her and said well guess what i'm actually here right now and yeah after this we texted for a bit uh sometimes daily sometimes we would take a few days break even a few weeks at some point and at some point after vidcon we were actually both in london at the same time and she and she let me know this through her dms now i will say she didn't come out outright and say i'm in london but she did say that she had gone to a place that was known to be a London thing. And I commented on that and said, and asked what she was doing in London. And just to clarify, we did not meet up whilst in London, nor make plans to do so. She was always extremely friendly to me. I was friendly to her. And honestly, I was very shocked to hear her. He flirts like a 15 year old. Yeah, I did, one thing I always notice when I see like leaked texts or like here's the evidence of flirting or whatever from any like any YouTuber or live streamer, I always think like it always feels like flirting that I did when I was 15, you know? I mean, the girl in this case is literally 18, so that tracks, but yeah. Say the things that she did say during her stream. When I first opened up her stream, it was it was after she'd already streamed it, but not long after. So people hadn't yet made the connection that it was relating to me. And when watching it, I was like, I was actually interested. I was I was thinking, okay, what's this going to be about? And then when she started saying more and more details, I realized, wait, this is this is about me. I was I was very very confused, very shocked, and didn't quite know what to think. Given I had no impression of any wrongdoing throughout this whole relationship that I had with her. Not at all. Like it was, if anything, it was the opposite. I thought we had a pretty good relationship. Despite the fact that we actually hadn't talked in a while, I thought if I had seen her in, in real life again, everything would be fine and we would be friends. It was actually around this point after the, after Bitcoin had finished and we were messaging that I found out her age. And since then I never pursued anything going forward. And I essentially stopped messaging her. Her last message to me was August 1st, 2023. And I haven't replied to her since then. After I watched her stream, I was pretty confused. I didn't understand how her account of the story had been so different from what actually happened. A lot of the facts that she said just didn't happen at all or were phrased in ways that just make me look as bad as possible. Saying things like, um, I insisted on her playing drinking games or that she was frozen in place or that she was scared. She was having fun. She was enjoying herself. She was showing this with her body language, with the way that she smiled, the way that she laughed and just her overall general demeanor. Now, one thing that I think is very important to differentiate here is that I do believe that she regrets being affectionate with me and that that really does make me feel terrible. I never want to make anyone feel uncomfortable or regret their interactions with me or anything along those lines, regardless of if it's sexual or not. And I'm truly, really sorry if I contributed towards that. But what's important to differentiate is that she was uncomfortable with this after the fact and not during. She says, quote, at the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky that it had happened to me. I was excited to be around such big creators to be at that convention in general. Now, actually, I've had a similar scenario to this where I... Was he's either so unaware of reality, he thinks he can just do whatever he wants that makes it okay, or he's pretending to be unaware. Um, my impression from all of this, without seeing the follow-up yet from the lady, from Katie, you know, just seeing this, is that, um, like, is that, uh, it's, it feels kind of, uh, indeterminate. Like, there's some stuff that he's said here that feels like it implicates him, even in his own way of framing the events, 
the stuff about silence uh, doesn't equal consent, but then he's like, didn't get any verbal consent. The kind of brushing over the initial claim of him allegedly being creepy as described by her. There's some stuff there where he, like, even from his perspective, it still makes me feel like, uh, at the very least, like I have some, um, it invites questions. You know, it, it makes me, I have questions, which I have a feeling are about to be answered. Uh, we have spent a lot of time on this. So I'm not going to finish the last three, four minutes of this video because I think we've gotten the content of it. Yeah, I, it's it, a lot of it is also like an optics run, right? Where like, you know, even if you are perfectly in the right, you have to phrase stuff super carefully in situations like this because it is an optics landmine. I, I oh, let, let me see. Let me see what she says in response because I, I want to see. I want to qualify my, um, you know, my, my beliefs appropriately. Because that's the point, right? You listen to both sides. It, there is also a, an important distinction between him being sort of like ignorantly uh, careless with her consent or being maliciously uh, indifferent to her consent. Like there is a big difference between those things. Though I don't know if we're going to know which it is either, right? So, okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. We'll see. We'll see. For now, this is what I have to say. He admitted to touching me that I was drunk, that I verbally didn't consent. In my mind, the conversation is over. He said silence does not equal consent. And yet, he one, never got verbal confirmation from me. Two, chose to move to a sexual act in the couch where everyone was hanging out without asking. I didn't, I don't know how these two facts coexist. How I can consent when there was no question. How can I consent when I was drunk? I prepared proof on the idea he wouldn't admit to it, that he wouldn't. Oh, God damn it. This is really poorly written, isn't it? Not just the lack of punctuation, but like structurally, this is going to be a ramble post from her. God damn it. Why would you not? Okay. I prepared proof on the idea he wouldn't admit to it, that he would deny touching me or being there, but he admitted it, that I was drunk, that he touched me in front of everyone, that I never said yes, nor did he ask. And I'm still asked for a response, proof, explanations. Frankly, I think it's insane. If you still need more after hearing him admit those two simple facts, then nothing I can say is going to change your mind, but here it is anyway. Okay. Addressing the stream. As for the iMessages, he showed us the All proof was him showing a group chat he wasn't even in, showing his friends. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to like mentally edit some of this because I, I don't even want to read all this out loud. I was after play the first night. I liked the game, wanted to play with other friends at conventions, so I asked the name. I don't know how it's relevant. That's why I went back. Nothing happened the first night, so it's irrelevant. Okay, these are like adjacent details. Dreams room, we said, D -d 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 ghosty leaves throw up, then four of us, we were all drunk, honestly, really weird, because I was just drunk and too tired to comment what was happening. Okay. Is this post draining your life force? Bad syntax drains my life force when I have to read it out loud, yeah. It's it actually like three times as tiring to read it out loud if it's not structured properly. Insta DMs, they were all fine, like I said in my stream, I did have my age in my bio, like it is this day, the messages were nothing insane, just banter, like I said, I admitted to messaging him after, I never hid that fact, I still consider myself lucky for what happened to me, even if I was uncomfortable, didn't ask for it, I was still considering myself lucky for what happened to me, even if I was uncomfortable, didn't ask for it, I was hating myself around now, thinking I was ungrateful, but as you can see, nothing insane or proof worthy being said, just banter. Okay, so she felt lucky to be talking to a verified account, someone famous, someone I had followed and watched for a while, that makes sense. Uh, this is the classic, like, power difference thing. This is the reason why I don't fans. Like, every YouTuber above a certain size has basically, like, a limitless ocean of pussy they could dip into if they are willing to fans. The problem with that is that you're fans. First of all, you people all have terrible taste. You watch me. I would never lower myself in that way. Second of all, there is a pretty big power difference. Not just, like, the literal power of, like, oh, you've got a big, super powerful YouTuber with money or whatever, but also, like, the social power and the the fact that there's an imbalance in the initial relationship. I don't think it's 100% a bad thing, right? Didn't Dunky and Leah, wasn't, wasn't Leah a fan of his initially? Like, if you have a fan that you end up talking to a lot and they basically elevate themselves above a parasocial relationship to it becoming a mutual relationship, I think that's possible. I don't think it's necessarily always bad, but it's a specific circumstance, right? At that point, you're not just fan. You meet a fan, but then you two end up becoming close friends. So I just want to be clear. I don't think literally every time that happens is bad. The fan has to have a very high power level, exactly. At one point he asked for my snap, but we did not Snapchat much at all because I don't use Snapchat. Good instinct. Da -da -da. I walked. I walked him out to the elevator. 
We left at the same time. My room was on the other side of the floor. In the hotel, you had a hall. Okay, so she had to walk by the elevator to get back to her room. Ah. Ah, see? Unless she's just lying about this, and I don't know why she would be, this seems like a huge misread from George, right? Like, if she has to walk by the elevator to get to the other hallway on the other side of that floor of the hotel room, but he interprets that as her walking him to the elevator. You know what I mean? So, like, from her perspective, she was just walking back to her room, and then he got in the elevator, and he was like, uh -huh, but unless, and he kept opening it and closing it over and over again while she's just standing there waiting to get back to her room. <laughs> oh, man. That's, uh, ooh. That's a rough one. Ooh. Therefore, I had to walk through the elevator room. I didn't, quote, walk him there. We both headed in that direction. I said, well, bye. And that's when he did the whole elevator is broken bit. Ooh. Ooh, that one. If I, if I, if I pulled that one, that would be, uh, that'd keep me up at night, you know? Not gonna lie, I think he was more predatory there. I struggle to imagine George not understanding that she had to go to the other side. Like, they walked next to each other, but he didn't realize that she was walking to her hotel room, not him to the elevator. I don't know how I would make that, like, I feel like that'd be an obvious difference to identify, but yeah. Oh, bye, da, da, da. The unmentioned friend, uh, da, 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 I don't care. We cuddled. A lot of the touch was initiated by him, probably not realizing it. I mean, he was literally spooning me from my left as I faced Ghosty to my right. I could never. Like, like laying down? No, because she faced Ghosty to her right. So he would have been like, flopped on her, basically, right? Like, yeah, like hanging off of her. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but was just me being drunk. Everyone on the couch was doing the same thing, all drunk close together, but I get it. I was drunk. I didn't think cuddling automatically meant it was to turn okay to turn sexual. I didn't know it was an invitation. I wasn't going to push him off in front of everyone. He took, a, he took it a step further in front of everyone, presumably going under her shirt, all because he assumed things and assumed he had the right. As a shy person, I could not speak up in front of him and everyone else, let alone say yes. Even if you wanted to take a step forward sexually, why do it in the open? If you're cautious about consent, why not ask? It's a good question. That's usually the first step. More important, why does everything have to get taken a step further? And may I reiterate that I was drunk? She could have moved. Yes, I got up and sat in the same spot, getting up to drink more, etc. Mentally, I believe in a room on a sofa with people in, with people on it, you just sit back where you were when you get up. Mentally, I was also drunk, and even if I were bold to move, that would be an obvious hit to his ego, to him, and everyone in the room. A bold move I didn't need to make, I could just deal with it till the night was over. I didn't want, I didn't want someone I had watched for a while or with a large following to hate me for denying to even sit next to him. I didn't want to embarrass him or myself, I know it's a dumb thought process, I acknowledge it. Was one of them wearing a GoPro? No, but that's why I always wear a GoPro when I'm hanging out with people. It's the it's the only way. I actually I have like I'm like a I've got like a Russian dash cam that I've just sort of like strapped to my torso. She stayed when her friends left. I didn't make the conscious and she would say my friend left throwing up in her hand. Ew. My friend left throwing up in her hand. And I didn't know she was so drunk she couldn't hold in her vomit and passed out in her bedroom. Okay, all right, all right, okay. Let's roll it back. Yeah, VidCon creator parties. Uh, parties. All right, all right. Okay, hold on now. How much are we drinking? How old was the friend? Was she eighteen? The more the night went on, the drunker I was. Like I said before, I put up with it in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big creators. Those last three points may I remind you are not an invitation to be sexual or that I wanted it or if he thought I did, he could have asked. Well, he assumed because of your body language. We had just met. Why did he think he knew me so well he could assume how I felt, assume he knew what my mannerisms meant? You didn't know me. Apparently, you didn't even know my age, but you knew what I wanted. No, he assumed it's what I wanted because why wouldn't I want that from someone like him? And remind me, since when I... Since when I was smiling an invitation... Since when was smiling an invitation... When I was sitting next to someone at invitation, since when was being drunk at invitation, any laughing I did with your hand under my clothes was out of nerves because I didn't think cuddling would result to that, and my shock left me speechless because I had never been to a guy's hotel room, never done anything sexual, never expected that cuddling meant what it meant what it did. I didn't know if it was normal or not. You touched me for the first time. <sighs> okay, one of three done. You're a f 
grown man who knows better. Why do I have to be strong and pull away or say stop? It's my fault because I was just asking for it, hinting at it. I should have known. But never his for not being able to ask a simple question before doing it at his age. Silence can be consent, a head nod, a silent confirmation. In order for confirmation to happen, you need to follow with a question, a question that was never asked. How is a drunk person supposed to consent? You think I was in the power to consent a 26-year-old man touched me because I laughed. I'm sorry, if I'm reading through this monotone is the only way I can because the this was all written so hastily that I don't know how to weight the sentences. But he was drunk too. Personally, when I'm drunk, I don't stick my hand under people's clothes on a couch in a room full of other people without asking. That's just me, though. Everyone in the room could verify she was comfortable. My text the day after. I want to make sure you're okay. I didn't like the way George was so touchy and blank told me about the shirt thing, and I just want to make sure you're all right. Ooh, that's pretty, um... That's, uh, that's pretty, uh, um... Uh... Uh, 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 condemning? Da damning, thank you. Yeah, that's pretty damning. Uh, for the day after, for other people to notice. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a pretty, that's a, that's a GG right there. Yes, I'm okay. It was definitely a bit weird, but I was drunk, so I didn't feel like doing anything to stop it anyway, and it's over now, so. I lo I lo love, love girls describing interactions with me, uh, followed with, uh, it's over now, so, exclamation point, you know? That's when you know you've, you've hit him with the, uh, the razzle-dazzle. Hey, buddy, wanted to double check that. Oh, this is a this is a different one. Uh, this is a, a a different message from a different person. Hey, buddy, I wanted to double check with you that George didn't make you uncomfortable at all last night. I saw he was getting really touchy with you, so I wanted to double check. Smile, smile. Two people noticed independently. I feel like somebody should have said something. Hey, if you're in like an uncomfortable social situation and everyone's drunk, or you think that, like, maybe a girl's being macked up on, she doesn't want it, you can contrive any number of dumbass excuses to pull her away. You know, it's it's pretty easy to, honestly. Want to look at this huge shit I just took? That's one, just right off the... right off the dome, you know? Um, look at this drawing of an anime girl on my phone. You know, like, I, yeah, the, you know, there's, it, like... <laughs> I'm going into labor. <laughs> Sorry. It's doable. Maybe, bro, I have no clue. Like, in the moment I was chilling, but thinking back in it, I'm sweating a little bit like, damn, especially after verifying so he knew I was 18. Crying, laughing emoji. And I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment because I was drunk. Crying, laughing emoji. I don't know. I have to ponder on it or just forget about it because it's over with lol. Hmm. I wonder if these texts validated her doubts about what occurred. Man, if multiple people from the outside are confirming discomfort i mean that's pretty like that's like a lot too because you can be made pretty uncomfortable without anyone else no and other people are drunk too so they're drunk but they're still identifying that you know like oh uh, yeah Ooh. zoinks is what i'm saying the after verifying i was 18 refers to a question i answered during a drinking game i'll explain later of course i played it down with my response at the time i was embarrassed i wanted to seem cool because i had never been sexual with someone before how was i supposed to know what it was supposed to feel like emotionally i was nervous today. i know everyone's speaking through euphemism here and i know that it doesn't exonerate george either way but when they say move hands under shirt do they mean like groping tits or not because that would because that to me at least in my mind would be the difference between like creepy um maybe predatory or whatever behavior and outright sexual assault because like they've implied it they probably meant holding her side well they said holding her side but then they said that he moved his hand up and i don't know if that means like because this is this is kind of like an arbitrary and almost meaningless distinction almost but i feel like on some level there is a difference between groping a person's tits and just like being handsy under a shirt I don't know how much of a difference it even makes. I just, I, 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 they're being, I guess, like ambiguous about it up on the rib. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's yeah. Whatever they say or they don't. I don't know. I'm not investigating it. Well, there's no difference with you vermin because there's no way to put a hand uh, under your shirt without touching your tits. So in your case, actually, it would just be like an automatic red flag. Didn't understand what I felt. I knew I fell off. The friends in that room were some of the last people I came out about how it affected me. I was embarrassed of my inexperience, embarrassed the fact that it was out in the open, scared to react when it happened because with any reaction I showed had an audience as he, quote, made his move in a room full of people. But let me remind you that their initial gut reaction by simply being in the same room and seeing the situation was them messaging me the next day worried. Yep, that's pretty damning. Asking if I was okay before they had talked to me about how I felt. They felt gross. The wristband. 
oh, the wristband about whether or not she was 21 or alleged to be 21, thought to be 21. Clear she sent the message in the chat, obviously being her hand. Okay, so here she's saying that it was unreasonable to assume that she was 21 because of the wristband, because that wasn't her wristband. The party we were at where the wristband talk initiated was an 18 plus party that you needed a band to enter. We had asked people around us for a wristband to enter the party, not a 21 wristband to drink. 21 wristband given by staff after seeing ID after entry. Okay, so there were two different wristbands, the 18 plus and the... Okay, I assumed that it was just the entrance in was 21 plus because drinking was there. But it's, it's 18 plus to go in, 21 plus to access bar. Okay. But this is not about age of consent anyway. Well, well no, it's not. We're not talking about her being a minor here. We're, she's just claiming that the belief that she was 21 because of her presence there was unreasonable on George's part. That George might have been more aware than he lets on that she was only 18. It's not a matter of, like, legal age of consent. It's just, again, man, if you're at a function, if you're at a party and everyone's drinking and someone's like, uh, yeah, I'm 18 a virgin. Nope. Launching that bitch out the window. Go get an Uber. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, this is just wristband technicality stuff. Quote, I thought she was 21. The girl who left early also sent me this message today. Her conversation with Clay that night before she left the room, she recalls it to a friend a few days later. I typed a message on my phone and showed it to Clay being like, does George realize there's an eight year difference between him and Katie? And he looks at me deadpan and is like, I don't see why it matters. I'm like, oh, okay. Clay is dream. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, let me reread it then. I typed a message on my phone and showed it to Dream, being like, does George realize there's an eight-year difference between him and Katie? And Dream looks at me deadpan and is like, I'm Dream, and I don't see why it matters. And I'm like, oh, okay, there we go. Now, there we go. Now it's fitting in. It's all, it's, there we go. It's all falling into place. An eight-year gap is not bad. Thank you for your input, Sleepy Joe Biden. Very in character. He was drunk, so I do not fault him for what he may respond with, as maybe he wasn't thinking right. Hmm. Uh, same with they were calling, wrong or untruthful, da da da, okay. And now for the last... That night, the game we were playing asked, who was the last to lose their virginity? Okay, was everyone here mentally 15? Are you f kidding me? Okay, I have... I have never in my life been drunk with a, with a group of my friends and thought, like, let's, let's play f giggly five-year-old truth or dare. Drinking games are always horny, you must know this. Yeah, but I wouldn't ask that. I would like at least something like, who was the last one to do anal? I don't know, something? Virginity? The, that word, I don't, if I'm drunk and horny and with friends, virginity is the last word in my mind. When I hear the word virginity, all I think of is like Mormonism. Maybe this is because of the people I had a crush on when I was in high school. Uh, like, I, I do not want to be partying with the lads. And it's like, okay, let's, 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 invoke adjacency you know to uh chastity what no good lord who cares i'm 25 and still a virgin good you're guaranteed presence in the kingdom of heaven that's because they're minecraft streamers yeah i suppose this is when i said me because i was 18 still a virgin this is also when dream chimed in to argue for his best friend and say something along the lines of well he lost his at 19 you aren't that old yet so he technically would still drink, and he drank. He lost his at 19, but you aren't that old yet, so technically he... Why would Dream drink if George was the one? Well, that doesn't make sense. Whatever. I remember the questions because the text I sent, because it's something I'll never forget. Yes, I know it's hard to remember a question like that thinking back now, but the night he couldn't have forgotten it that quick. Remembering back to my answer just hour. If, if there was a drinking game happening and somebody announced that they were 18 a virgin, I couldn't fathom like forgetting that later in the night, you know? That would be insane. Happened to pick my story apart with this great drunk memory. I wonder how he can't remember the most important part of it all, aka me saying my age. I don't think he's dumb. I think even if he was talking to someone, especially in Insta DMs, he would check for an age or at least see a bio. Someone who is, quote, so concerned about consent wouldn't be so naive. Someone with such a big platform wouldn't risk it unless they knew they could pull the I didn't know card. Her friends influenced her because they hate us. Okay, this seems like a wrap up. And most importantly, this isn't a one-time thing. The larger creators that have reached out about their own stories concerning them and are still too scared of them to come forward, may, they make me sick. Women who have 
been friends with them, people I watch, people I've never spoken to, and people I have. This is so much bigger than me. I wish they find peace. There is a reason people have distanced themselves from these men. There is a reason other creators act like they do. My experience is simply the only one public, with no creator owes it to anyone to show their experience with them. I just wish people see obvious distance themselves. I'll be away for a week in the stream of final statement. I wish to continue. Da, da. <sighs> okay. Well, you know, from the responses that I've seen, just at a glance, I'm sure the drama YouTuber community is trashing her because they do that every time a woman speaks up about anything bad a man did to her. I think um, it seems like the, the general responses have been pretty positive towards what she's saying, you know? Well, you know, at least they're like listening to her. And then finally, George not found after she posted all of that said, after reading Katie's newest post, my perspective on the night, my overall conclusion has changed massively. I'm very sorry. Does not change the fact that you were hurt. I'll be saying more soon. The bar is in hell. Yeah, I suppose. They're mostly hyper fixating on stupid details. Well, yeah, of course. Um, drama YouTubers, like, it's there's, there's a reason why they're like scum of the earth, right? There's no moral center to any of this. It's just anything they can make money off of. And because their audience is generally shitty, like 14 year old boys, they have to go to, for angles that they like. Uh, Obviously, a lot of this is a he, sh he said, she said, is what I would be saying if it wasn't for the fact that apparently multiple people messaged her after the fact and said, hey, from a distance, this still did look creepy. Uh, yeah, from her side of things, obviously, like if you're a chick or drunk or whatever, like in any situation, you should be direct about your discomfort. But then again, like, OK, uh, the real narrative here, or I guess the real bit here is like him being a creepo, which it seems like he was. I don't know how malicious it was versus him being like callously unaware it seems like there's evidence towards both sides of things where he could have been more malicious if he wanted but he also at some point seemed painfully unaware my guess is that he was to some level recklessly indifferent to her level of comfort and consent but at times his behavior trended towards the predatory thinking like if my hand creeps up under her shirt slowly enough she won't say anything or whatever that, yeah, like stuff like that to me comes across less as like him being indifferent and more like him deliberately trying to skirt the, uh, the, the boundaries. You know what I mean? So that's probably, that's probably not good. You probably shouldn't be creepy to people. That's my opinion on the matter, I feel. Hot take? Yeah, hot take, I guess. Also, he's British? Yeah. I, it's just, I think it's important to go over stuff like this because, you know, oftentimes, um, and the nuance of these situations gives you a, a good opportunity to talk about that, some specific social norms, what people should or shouldn't do. It's, it's important to discuss stuff like this. It helps people recognize when it happens to them. Yeah, to an extent, that is a big part of it. Yeah. It's shocking how thoroughly men don't understand consent. Yeah, okay, the main issue is that, like, sexually, men are taught that they're the aggressors and women are the passive receivers of their sexual intent. And in that framework, the like predator prey dynamic for sexuality, the idea that a lot of men have is that women don't actually like sex that much, or at least they don't like the, um, they can't admit they like sex. So the way to get around that is to trick them into wanting to have sex with you. And oftentimes one of the best ways of doing that is to uh, circumvent their discomfort until a point where they're committed enough that they can acknowledge it, you know? I think that on some level, a lot of guys kind of fantasize about being with a girl in some kind of social setting. And, uh, you know, they, uh, like, the, 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 the chick's being normal or whatever, but the, the, the guy can kind of, like, slowly mack up in her to a point where eventually he's kind of, like, groping her or something like that. And then past that point, because he sort of tripped the invisible barrier, now she can indicate that she's actually into it. But she won't before that point. Like, the idea being, if you've got a hand on her thigh and you said, you know, like, hey can I put my hand on your ass? She would say no. But if you had your hand on her thigh and then like over the course of half an hour, you kind of slid it down to her ass in a way that never really gave her a clear barrier to say no to, by the time it's already on her ass, now you've gotten far enough that she can admit that she likes it because you've kind of like gotten over that initial barrier and now you're in the clear. This is of course completely psychotic and not at all how any of this works. Uh, unless your goal is to kind of like, I don't know, terrify women into sex, which a lot of people seem to think that is the goal. That is an insane way of thinking, lol. That is literally how pickup artists 
teach you to treat women. And a lot of guys think on that. Like, guys didn't learn to do that from pickup artistry. Pickup artistry is just a professionalization of pre-existing predatory trends that men engaged in to, like, get women, you know? Maybe this is too charitable, but I think some guys are just really nervous. Yeah, but a lot of girls are nervous and they're not doing this crap. At least they tend not to. Uh, you know, you, you, you just have to operate on the assumption that women are equally interested, potentially, not necessarily, but potentially, in being into you. And because they're capable of it, if they don't demonstrate that interest, that just means they're not interested, you know? It's that simple. You just ha you have to operate on that assumption, right? And some people will say, oh, but there are girls who like the chase. There are girls who like the, um, you know, the, the feeling of being pursued or whatever. And you know what? Yeah, there are. But the right way to do that is to make sure it's all kosher first, because that's just a dynamic, right? That's not even just a girl thing. I've been with gay guys who are like that, you know? You have to make sure that's the right, like, it's like, okay, here, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm even going to level the, like, the farther end of the spectrum, okay? There have been a few girls that I've been with, to varying extents, who liked the playing hard to get thing. Now, personally, I don't like this. I don't like the playing hard to get thing. If you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. Be straightforward. None of this nonsense, whatever. But they liked it. It's a dynamic they like. But the only reason I knew that is because they told me and them telling me that is an indication that they want me to play the other side of that dynamic. That's consent. If a chick says, yeah, I kind of like playing hard to get or whatever, so da da da, and you talk about it, they're indicating to you they are interested, right? They just wanted to be played out, right? There's like a theater that they, they like sort of moving through. That's their thing, you know? And if that's the case, that's fine. Better a woman who admits that she likes playing hard to get than one who doesn't. But once that admission is there, you can talk about it and you can engage in it. And at that point, yeah, you're doing you're doing role play, basically, right? At that point, you're already in. The problem here is just nobody has that initial conversation. And by the way, I don't think a lot of women really like the playing hard to get thing. This might be like an experience thing. I grew up in coastal cities. I grew up around a lot of queer people, whatever. But in my experience, even when I'm with straight women, for the most part, you can talk with a woman and say like, hey, you're hot. And she can go, oh, thank you. And then you can like lean in real close, you know, and then she'll like, kiss you or you 50 you 50 you know put some work in both of you okay none of that no being lazy all right and you can just you, you, she like they they they, they, they kind of melt a lot of them like i just don't think a lot of women play that hard to get you you just have to be, be nice to them what i'm saying don't be lazy dr strange strange be nice and be interesting here's dream's response crying to all this Women like seeing that you're attracted to them, not unrepentantly horny. Some women like the unrepentantly horny thing, but, you know, just talk it out. Just talk it out. Just talk it out. It's easy. And if a chick doesn't want to talk it out, then she's not worth your time, okay? If, you, if you're with someone and you like them, but any attempt to mutually navigate any conversation like that she shuts down, then she's not mature enough to be f***ing you. I'm sorry. What is this? My image, or... But I care. Sorry. I care about people. And I want people to talk to me if they have anything, any problem. Dream crying on space while talking about his friend assaulting a freshly 18-year-old because he's upset the 18-year-old Katie didn't come to him for support about his best friend assaulting her. She doesn't even personally know him. Nice. With anyone. Do you think he's doing the baby neck thing? You mean the... That thing, like, over and over again? The... <laughs> he's gotta be, right? That's That explains the long pauses. Including myself. My image, or... Okay, gotcha. 
Well, if a friend of mine sexually assaulted an 18 year old in my presence, uh, and then the drama only came out a year later, I would not respond by doing a Twitter space and weepily saying that she should have come to me. That's just me though. That's a skill difference. Uh, you know, skill. Uh, yeah. Oh man. Well, that was, that was, that was a whole bunch of YouTube drama. Isn't body language a type of communication though? Yeah, but it's also extremely ambiguous. Okay. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to parse words on this. There are some kinds of body language that I think fairly. In so leaving aside the fact that she was drunk. Okay. Let's, even if we're talking about like a sober person. Okay. If you're at a party and you know, everyone's having a good time and you know, you, uh, 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 you're walking to the kitchen to get like another drink and there's a chick in front of you who you've talked to a few times and she pushes her ass against you and then like leans back into you or whatever. Uh, like, okay. There are obviously some points where body language is unambiguous enough that at that point, I don't think you're like, I don't think you're a rapist to like lean forward into her or whatever, or put a hand around her stomach if she's like grinding her ass against you. Okay. I don't like this is, I, I feel like a lot of people think of this as some kind of like binary where on one hand, you're, you're like a potential rapist. And on the other hand, you have to get like a signed consent form for every inch your hand moves up or down her body. And I just don't think that's true. I think that what you need to establish beyond a shadow of a doubt, very clearly, verbally, always verbally, okay, is general interest in moving forward. That's the thing, right? I'm not saying every single level of sexual interaction has to be sort of governed and dictated by explicit verbal consent because in practice, literally no one does that, but the general interest and level of comfort is something that should always be very verbally clear, you know? So like, even if you're with a person that seems pretty clearly interested in you or whatever, like if you're, I get, I guess the point that I'm getting at here is that like, um, I would make sure verbally if you're macking up on someone, how they're feeling moving forward. But I wouldn't think like, oh, I'm making out with this chick. I've got a hand on her side. I'm going to now explicitly ask, like, can I move it up this? Like, it's a, it's a, I feel like people get really reductive about this in a way that um, I don't think it's people being disingenuous. I just think it's really, really difficult to like concretely explain everything. Yeah, it's 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 about assuring verbally the general level of interest and comfort. And you know what? Okay, and by the way, I'll say it, okay? If you're like hardcore making out with somebody, okay, you're both adults, you know, we're all adults here. If I'm hardcore making out with somebody after a date or whatever, I don't usually ask like, oh, my hands are on you here. Can I reach down and grab your ass? Because I'm 30 and I'm making out with somebody else my age. Like, okay. But the critical thing here is the mutual, like, expression and confirmation of enthusiasm, you know? And if ever there's something that either person does the other person doesn't like, you make sure people are comfortable, because in an environment of comfort, people will tell you if they don't like a thing, right? That's the critical part. You're not trying to hedge your bets against literally everything you could potentially do or have done to you in any sexual situation. There are thousands of things. But if you know a person's comfortable, happy, and engaged, then you know they're like in a fair position to be clear with their interests. Does that make sense? The main issue here, by the way, was not with, with the whole George and Katie thing. The main issue here was not actually whether or not he explicitly got permission to cuddle her or put her, uh, his hand under her shirt. Because I bet you, since she already felt pressured and was drunk and nervous, she might have verbally confirmed consent, right? Like, think of her description of the events that took place, you know? She was nervous enough that she kept going back. She didn't want to, like, offend. She felt like, um, you know, she was grateful to even be around all these people that she knew, these famous and powerful YouTubers. She might have said yes. The question wasn't, did he secure verbal consent for doing that? The question was, is she okay? Broadly, I mean. And that is a more complicated question because it's not about any specific act. It's about the general mood, vibe, level of comfort. And his inability to understand that ultimately was the cause of these issues. Mind reading? No, not mind reading. It's complicated. Sometimes verbal, this is why people say like enthusiastic consent 
is more important than just consent because they have to be like, because, you know, a person can consent to, you know, hostage negotiation bullshit. You put a gun at their head, whatever, right? It's like enthusiastic consent. You want them to be happy about it. Yeah, but Vosh, if she verbally consents, then how can he ever be sure of that? Okay, Zigabiz, if you're with a girl and she's drunk and small and young looking and nervous, and you're this massively powerful YouTuber, I mean, hugely powerful, incredibly influential, and you're basically like hanging on her in a couch. She's on her phone. She's looking away from you. She's talking with other friends. At no point have you confirmed anything. If I if I suddenly got like warped into that position, like with a vroom, I am now suddenly George was taken. Yeah, shit, right? My first thought would not be, can I get verbal consent for putting my hand under her shirt? My first thought would be, is this bitch okay? Like, what am I doing here? You know, what am I like? Is this entire situation the product of our mutual enthusiasm for what's going on? Or is the situation just like, I have slowly been worming my way around this girl, you know? Am I a worm? Am I wrapping my worm body around her? Uh, that would be the thing that I would want to secure. And for me, in order to do that, my goal is not... Uh, to just ask directly. Have you ever been in a conversation with a meek person and they seem disinterested? So you say, oh, am I boring you? And they go, no, no. But then later you found out that, that you really were boring them. They were just too timid to say. That's why the more effective way to find out if you're boring a person is to say something like, oh, but I've been going on for a while. Um, you know, I'm going to go get a drink and uh, I'll talk about it more later if you want. And then later, you'll know if she wants to talk about it more. You've given her a clear out. You can go get a drink. And if she really wants to hear more, then you'll find out. You'll know. She'll come and ask. It'll be indicated. Whereas if she seems kind of avoidant or disinterested, okay, then there you go. That's your answer. You tried your best. She was timid. She didn't tell you up front whether she was interested. Uh, you're not a mind reader. That's fine. You're not supposed to be. She wasn't interested. That's fine. That's life. It's the same with consent. The general vibe of a situation is often way more about whether or not other people have a fair out than it is. So if I was in, if I was warped into George's position, you know what I would do? I would find a different place to sit myself. If I suddenly get transported into his mind, leaving aside the drunkenness and the fact she ended up being 18 and everything else, just at the face of things, my first thought would be, would she still be this close to me? if I moved to a different place. Because that would be a pretty strong indicator, right? If I got up, moved to like a different couch in this big penthouse hotel room, sat there to like some contrivance, oh, I'm gonna stretch my legs at whatever, and then she got up and sat back next to me and leaned into me, that's a pretty strong indication of consent right there, or at the very least, some kind of interest. Not consent for feeling her up under a shirt, but just general interest. But it seems like that didn't happen, you know? The 10,000 IQ foreplay, a big part of foreplay or any kind of flirting is giving other people space to make moves themselves, even if you're the main one making moves, even if you're usually the one who's more upfront, more sexually aggressive, more direct, you still have to occasionally pull back a bit because them filling that space is how you secure mutual interest, not just you keep pushing forward and pushing forward, pushing forward. Hey, are you into this? Hey, are you into this? Hey, are you into this? Sure, maybe they say yes, but do you know if they were really into it, you could pull back a bit and they would fill that space? We understand, right? Everyone gets this? Yeah, exactly, Vermin. It seems like the opposite, if anything. Like, from his perspective, he was clinging to her. You know, he was... um at the very least, he was taking advantage of timidness. That's that's the most charitable thing you could say, right? Like he was like that that that's the fair assumption, I feel. But yeah, yeah, shouldn't do that. I think it's important to go over stuff like this because the the complexities of navigating social interactions, people's interest and consent or whatever else, are actually infinitely complicated, like everything involving communication. That doesn't mean there aren't, like, good practices to engage in. A lot of guys are really bad at this, in part because they're encouraged to be sexually aggressive and told that women won't, like, enjoy their passivity. But also, I think because a lot of guys have difficulty empathizing with somebody being cripplingly nervous in a sexual situation. Like, the idea that a person might be so timid that they would freeze up or be uh, pliable but not interested, you know? Like, I think a lot of guys have trouble sympathizing with that. 
Not gonna lie, Vosh, I don't think this really always works. If you give too many indications you're not interested, women will assume they're harassing you. Now, I'm not saying to indicate you're not interested. I'm just saying to give them a little bit of space. Like, let me put it this way, okay? Let's say that you're an anime character. You're a guy, okay? And there's a girl that you wanna kiss, okay? Now, how do you know, and like you wanna go for a big dramatic kiss, okay? Now, let's talk best practices, okay? Now, you could just, you think she likes you, right? You could just lean in and give her a big old kiss in the lips, like real sudden-like, right? And maybe you do that, and maybe at first she kind of freezes out of surprise, but then she, like, reciprocates the kissing. But that's not really great, is it? Like, it could be she's just responding to a weird panic situation. She was just chilling, then you plant the kiss in her lips, and she, she responds to the kiss, sure. She doesn't, like, immediately pull back or slap you, but, like... You don't know anything, right? That's why best practice is you lean in most of the way and then she leans it a little bit of the rest. Wasn't there a movie about this where like Will Smith or something? You lean in most of the way. She leans in the little bit of the rest, you know? If that's what happens, then you're in the clear, baby. You, you don't need to worry at all. You lean in and then she kisses you. Like that's a situation where if nothing else, you've got a pretty strong indication of her interest. I mean, is it possible that she was still acting out of, uh, you know, like uh, fear or she like you know, panicked about it? Like, yeah, sure. But I think at that point you have indicated, you, you have done a good there. That, like that is a good way of approaching it. What if she was kissing me as a friend? Ah, the lesbian assumption. Yeah, you don't go exact, you don't go the whole 100. You go, it's 90, 10, 80, 20, whatever. What if I'm ugly? Watch more of my streams. It'll help. She's unzipping my pants. She, uh, could she be interested in me? Well, okay, Sake, you make a joke, but I will say I did once hook up with somebody who um, placed a very high distinction between the sexual uh, gravitas of feeling a person up through their clothes and feeling their naked bodies. In my experience, for the most part, if a person is rubbing your dick through your pants, like they're on that shit, right? Like I, I'm not in high school anymore. Like if I, if I'm, if I'm hooking up with somebody and they're rubbing my dick through, like they're probably about to take my dick out and do something wacky with it, right? That is often the case. Uh, but the one person that I was with, very strong distinction. They were very clear about that. So you know, even in those cases, you should make sure, right? And whatever people are comfortable with. Yeah, they're gonna do a, like a helicopter thing, you know, like wag it around a bit. Okay, this has gone on for way the f too long. Okay, stop, stop, stop.